As we conclude the book of Deuteronomy, we also conclude all of the books of Moses. As we've looked through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, we have seen passages that touched on every single thing that Jesus said that we are to bear witness to. That Jesus would come, that he would suffer and die, that he would rise again on the third day in fulfillment of the scriptures, that the Messiah would enter into his glory, and that forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. In fact, we don't only see this information, but we see these foundational statements that are I would argue, necessary for Christians to truly bear witness to who Christ is in the world. In the book of Deuteronomy, we saw two passages in particular that focused on the nature of the Messiah who was to come, that he would be a prophet like Moses. And also, we saw this wonderful description in casuistic law in Deuteronomy chapter 21 that explained the mechanism of how it is that God could be both just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Christ, and how it could be that God could be just to put our sin and the sin of the world upon the sinless Son of God. These passages are critical for us understanding what our faith truly is, and they are also very needed so that we can explain these truths to others. If we're going to explain these things to others, we must first understand them ourselves. And we'll see that as we move out of the books of Moses into the prophets and the Psalms, that we are also going to find many other wonderful, beautiful, and vivid, explicit passages about the Messiah that are going to testify to these same four things and more, that the Christ would come and suffer, that he would die, that he would rise again from the dead on the third day, that he would enter into his glory, and that forgiveness for sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. However, all of these passages are going to be built upon these foundational books of Moses. I understand that for some modern Christians, that they don't like studying all these things, that they'd rather look to the New Testament. But the New Testament builds upon these things. In fact, the church was thriving well before any book of the New Testament was written. Don't forget that the New Testament was written primarily because of problems that were arising in the life of believers. And as the Apostle Paul, the Apostle to the Gentiles, and others would write these books, they were usually addressing issues, not always, but usually. And they would attempt to remind them of the things that they had heard at first, that they had heard the gospel, that they had heard the Christ proclaimed. And how was the Christ proclaimed? It was through these types of scriptures. As we move through the New Testament documents, it's important for us to understand not just the content, but the context of these passages. And so I hope that you've enjoyed these videos. I hope that you've been edified in your faith. I hope that you understand these things better for yourself so that you can praise God and give him thanks for being such a wonderful Savior, for providing the perfect salvation in his Son, Jesus the Christ, and for testifying of these things hundreds and even more than a thousand years in advance. Remember, all of the books of Moses were written about 1,400 years before Jesus was even born. And this is truly astonishing. I hope that not only will you then praise God in your heart and in your mind, but that also you will begin to speak these wonderful truths to others as we bear witness for him in the world, built off the scriptures that he gave for this purpose. Jesus told us that we would be his witnesses, and we are to testify to these things. And the books of Moses have given us what we need to be equipped so that we can bear testimony in the world. We'll continue in the books of the prophets and the Psalms in subsequent videos, but I do hope that you'll subscribe to our channel and look for those things, that you'll like these videos and leave me any feedback in the comments down below. Until next time, as we go from here, we go not just to live for ourselves, but to live for the praise and glory of his name, which means that we live to bear witness to the Christ who came for the salvation of all who will turn to him and believe.